Let's head down to Lincoln, Nebraska, where the Cornhuskers are gearing up for a big recruiting weekend. The Colorado Buffaloes are coming to down. I want to talk to Steve Wiltfong about a couple fives, well, about a big five-star target that's going to be in town. We're talking number one athlete, Michael Terry the third. Steve, I know you've put in a recruiting prediction machine pick in for Texas when it comes to athlete Michael Terry the third, but Nebraska not out of this one by any means. No, recruitments are fluid in Nebraska. Getting him on campus for a third time this calendar year. Took his official visit in the spring for the spring game. Returned at the end of summer. Now he's coming to this big brouhaha inside Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. He's talked about the pro player development at Nebraska. The exciting offense. Talked about Nebraska being on that trajectory upward under coach rule and company they got a dominant win against utep there's some good buzz and energy around this program but saturday night against colorado a rivalry game that is an opportunity to show these recruits in person what that environment's like where this program is headed and it could be big for michael terry and his family they have great relationships at nebraska right now they're excited to get there for this one i think texas leads but can nebraska change that this weekend they're certainly going to have an atmosphere and an environment where they can make a move all right let's talk about a pair of flip targets that are also going to be on campus you broke the news about wide receiver cortez mills he's committed to oklahoma he's from miami Committed to Oklahoma, one of the top wide receivers in America. He's going to be in Lincoln. And also, Dawson Merritt, committed to Alabama. He's out of the state of Kansas. So, Nebraska, can they get the spatula out early in the season? Well, these are guys that have been top of the board for Nebraska the entire cycle. So when Cortez announced his commitment to Oklahoma and Dawson announced his to Alabama, they never have gone away. They've continued mm. to maintain the strong connection with both. And Cortez is coming out on a visit. Uh, he had a great time at the spring game, like that environment. And then Dawson Merritt, his family, his dad's a coach with the Chiefs. They have just a good rapport with Matt Rule and company, and that relationship has remained strong. He has visited already one time since committing to Alabama, so this is a return trip to campus. And I think if Nebraska has the season they want to have, they can be a real factor for Dawson Merritt as his process continues. Alabama, that coaching staff, what they've done at other places, what Alabama has done historically throughout Dawson Merritt's life, the track record of player development, the excellence. That's why he's committed to the Crimson Tide. They're not going to screw up that recruitment for Nebraska. They have to play well. They have to show that this is a program that's on the way up. They haven't had a winning season in like five, six campaigns. Uh, it's been a while since Nebraska has ended the year with a winning record. So they have to show Dawson Merritt and his family, yes, we like you, Matt Rule. What you've done historically as a program uh, builder, uh, it, it, it has our attention, but we got to see it at Nebraska. And if Nebraska can continue to show Dawson Merritt and his family that this program is indeed finally rebounding from several straight losing seasons, then I think that they can be a real factor to flip Dawson Merritt when it's mm -hmm. all said and done. Yeah, two big-time targets that I think they have a shot at. Both of them, we'll see how that plays out. Now, four-star linebacker Christian Jones, he's probably Nebraska's most important uncommitted target as we head into the season. We're expecting him to be in Lincoln as well. What do you think about where the Cornhuskers stand with Jones? Yeah, he was at the Utah game. He told me he will be back for the Colorado game. And he, too, is liking the trajectory of the program, getting around the players on the team, seeing the way that they're responding to Coach Rule and this coaching staff and that culture excites him. He also wants to get back to Oklahoma for a game this year. I probably still give the Sooners the edge right now, but Nebraska hanging in there, going to get him back on campus again. Mm. He's visited an awful lot. So if you follow the visit rule, then he will end up at Nebraska. But he keeps talking up Oklahoma and is excited about the Sooners and wants to get to Norman as well. All right, number one offensive tackle in the 2026 class, Jackson Cantwell. Everybody's trying to take a stab at Cantwell. Last weekend, Ole Miss got him on campus in week one. This weekend, it's going to be Nebraska. We know they made that run at David Sanders. Jackson Cantwell is the next number one offensive tackle in the 2026 class. Uh, Nebraska laying the groundwork here. Do you think they're a legitimate contender to land him? Yeah, I mean, this is one of the game visits he lined up. He's got a keen eye on the SEC. You're talking mm -hmm. about Georgia. I'd probably give Georgia the edge going into the season. Alabama's way high on his list. LSU, 
Uh, but Nebraska is a program that he's been to a couple times in his process, loves being in that atmosphere around that environment. And he, like so many others, waiting to watch Nebraska bust out. What a time. Saturday night, prime time. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime inside Memorial Stadium. This rivalry is back, and Nebraska looking to get a little revenge after losing last year in Boulder. Mm, yeah, it's going to be fun. We're going to go live as soon as that game's over. That'll be our recruit reaction on the On Three Recruit Channel. Make sure you guys are subscribed because we. Josh, keep an eye on keep an eye on quarterback Michael Clayton. I know I cut you off there, but he's visiting this weekend. He's got an offer. He's very excited. Twenty twenty six recruit as twenty twenty six is fly off the board. This is a guy that the Huskers have poured a lot into, him and Dayton Rayola, younger brother of Dylan Rayola. He's camped. He was out. Uh, he's been out to Nebraska. He was there at the end of July, had a great visit coming in to watch Nebraska play Colorado, starting quarterback at Buford High, taking over for his brother. Uh, I like where Nebraska stands with Dayton, and then they're moving up the list for Michael Clayton as well. Yeah. All right, let's play, let's play a little hypothetical. Walk with me here. Let's pretend that the Huskers win – Eight games, nine games. Say they have an incredible season. The Huskers, they're back. They're making a bowl game. What's the potential if Rule can pull off a big season? Well, through all the losing seasons, they've recruited top 25 mm -hmm. recruiting classes, and then they go out there and they can't win one possession football games. Uh, so if they're able to win nine games, I don't know, top 20 class maybe. Look, Nebraska's program is still going to be one that's a development-based program that can win some blue-chip recruiting battles pull out a Dawson Merritt, uh, win out for a Dylan Rayola for whatever reasons, proximity or ties to the program. But high upside guys, getting the best out of them, culture fits, maintaining them in your program. I talked to Matt Rule at Big Ten Media Day. Roster retention is so big with him, he said. So a lot of what they're doing behind the scenes from an NIL standpoint is geared towards keeping their best players in the program because that's how they're going to build it up foundationally at Nebraska, getting some big wins in the transfer portal. Guys like Dante Dowdell, who's going to be a terrific running back for them. We saw uh, that in week one for the Huskers getting him from Oregon mm -hmm. but it's a development based program player retention is so important for Nebraska it is for everybody but for a place like Nebraska that wants to restore glory keeping your best young players in the program is what they're pouring a lot of resources into right now that they can still go out and win a blue chip battle and they got a lot of support and infrastructure for that but it's all about roster retention for Nebraska and Matt Rule as they get their culture and scheme in place.